Hello everyone, this is Noor Zibde, functional dietitian and nutritionist, and you are watching the Thank Gut It's Fixed show, episode number 12. Today's episode is about the best diet for an autoimmune condition, so make sure you watch and um, till the end, because I'm going to share not one, but multiple ways you can approach a diet for an autoimmune condition, and something that you always have to keep in mind if you have an autoimmune condition yourself or someone that you love and care about. Now, a little bit of um, background update. I am actually, um, this is not a live, by the time you watch this, it's not going to be a live f Facebook um, video because my internet connection is not very reliable uh, for some reason. And I am actually um, in uh, Amman, in Jordan, Amman. So I am completely in a different country and um, and I'm super excited to be here on this episode. And um, it's actually March 21st, and this is um, Mother's Day in Jordan. So we have a somewhat of a fun celebration for the moms out there. So if you are a mom celebrating, happy Mother's Day. So back to the topic. Um, the topic is the best diet for an autoimmune condition. Now, um, I posted two weeks ago maybe something, an article about um, what triggers autoimmune conditions. They found that a, a study in Yale University found that um, a pathogen or a bacteria in the gut that travels to different parts and tissues of the body, and that can cause a um, a trigger an autoimmune disease. So that was pretty interesting because I've been talking about this all the time that 80% of your immune system, 80% of your immune system is in your gut because that's the biggest surface area between you and the outside world. So when there is a pathogen and, or a microbe or a bacteria in there and your immune system is activated, think of the immune system as a, an army without a general. And they're just like start acting up and start fighting things that um, may be pathogenic or foreign and things that can be part of your own body. And that can trigger an autoimmune, which is your immune cells starting to attack your own cells. So after posting this video, I got a bunch of questions, people asking me like, what do I eat if I have an autoimmune condition? And several of you asked this um, online and privately and in private discussions. So I decided to answer this in today's episode. So what do you do um, diet-wise? How can you, um, you know, change the way you eat if you are like set to make a dietary change, which I congratulate, congratulate you for because it actually can make a big difference um, on your health and on your immune system. So if there's one thing that you want to start with would be to eliminate gluten from your diet. Now, gluten is a protein that is found in wheat, in rye, barley, and oats that don't have, um, that may have been processed uh, with wheat or in the same processing um, areas. Now, um, keep in mind that there are some grains or like foods that may actually be derived from wheat, but you don't realize it. Um, these are things like couscous or um, frike, which is like a Middle Eastern grain, or bulgur, s similar thing, um, or um, um, you know, some types of, um, you know, just like some, some types of like breads or flours may, you may not realize that it's actually made from um, wheat. Um, sometimes actually wheat can show up in gravies and you may not realize that you're going to someone's house and they made a soup and they added a tablespoon of flour to make a gravy or a sauce. So it can come from different sources. Now the reason we want to eliminate gluten is because we, um, several studies showed that, um, Gluten can release or um, the the release of a protein that's called zonulin that makes your leaky your gut leaky or your intestinal permeability increases. And they have linked um, gluten free diets to improved in antibody levels, which are the markers of autoimmune conditions. So this is one of the reasons, and I actually do find success with um, having my patients follow a gluten free diet plus a few other things, of course, um, in improvement in their um, autoimmune markers. So that's the first thing if there's one thing only that you can change. Now, gluten-free products are available everywhere in, in, in all countries, really. Um, if you are actually sensitive, you have to be really careful. So some of the local bakeries here in Jordan, um, they may have some gluten-free option, but it's sitting on a shelf next to a regular piece of bread, or the breads are being baked fresh in the bakery, so there's like a lot of flour in the air. So somebody with celiac disease or with um, super sensitive to gluten, this may not be a good option. Um, 
But actually, I'm just going to go on a little tangent here with gluten is I'm getting a lot of questions from people like, is it good for weight loss? And no, it's not necessarily, it's not a weight loss diet. Taking gluten out will help reduce some of the inflammation, will improve your gut health, will improve the, the integrity of your cells the, in the intestine, but it's not, I don't recommend it as a weight loss plan. So keep that in mind. We can talk about this some other time. So the first thing is removing gluten. Now, the next thing would be to remove dairy. Now, dairy includes butter, cheese, yogurt, kefir, kefir, uh, no matter how you call it, um, cottage cheese, um, milk, cream, half and half, um, even ghee, even though it doesn't have dairy proteins, if this is the first time you're trying it, I would actually recommend that you take it out for at least a few weeks to see what the effect of a dairy-free diet is. Same as gluten, dairy and powdered milk, for example, is found in a lot of foods, like maybe gluten-free breads would have uh, powdered milk, or it's in baked goods in, in many different places, so you kind of have to be diligent about reading the label. Why is dairy a problem? Dairy can look like gluten, so there is a similarity in there, and it can activate the immune system, and a lot of times it's a matter of getting your antibodies tested before and then trying a diet or uh, eliminating certain things in, your, in, in what you eat, and then testing or measuring your antibodies again to see have they dropped. Did they drop? Uh, were you really Really following the diet 100%. Um, sometimes taking a bite of cake here and there can actually mess it up. And so if you really want to do this experiment, you have to be really strict, I would say, for two to four weeks, um, four weeks at minimum, and sometimes even 12 weeks to see that effect. So first thing we said, removing gluten, then removing dairy. The third one I would say would be removing grains. And so these are things like rice and um, uh, like all the other grains like oats and corn and, um, you know, buckwheat and quinoa, they're not technically grains, but they're somewhat of a seed slash grain. And um, these can irritate the gut. And if you're ready for that step, then it could be something that you can incorporate or try to eliminate from your diet. Or if you've already tried the gluten-free and the dairy-free and you're still not uh, improving, especially if you have gut issues, uh, symptoms like digestive symptoms, then maybe eliminating the grains would be the third step. Now, after that would be eliminating beans and uh, lentils. Now, the beans and lentils are generally all over the world, are known for having fiber, and I've uh, done an episode about prebiotics and how fiber is really healthy for you, well, that specific fiber, but for some people who have um, gut issues, and a lot of times they correlate with autoimmune conditions, um, the f specific types of fibers or the, the um, parts of the, the legumes um, plants, they can actually irritate and um, aggravate um, inflammation in the gut. And we really have to make sure that your gut is really healthy and has this integrity um, between the cells. So when you eliminate all grains, including gluten and dairy and lentils and beans, um, you're actually now on a, a paleo type diet. And so paleo diets are actually really helpful for people with autoimmune conditions. And I use them or incorporate some of the principles of paleo diets in um, helping people with autoimmune conditions. Um, now the next one would be there is an autoimmune paleo diet. And in that, there are even more things that tend to be um, eliminated, maybe eliminating um, nuts and seeds as well. So as you can see in certain spices. So as you can see, then the progression, it becomes even stricter, taking more things out of your diet. And so when you are trying to figure out, like, what should I do if I have an autoimmune condition, or if someone I care about has that, and I'm I am the one who prepares the meals for them. What do I do? Take a look at where you're at now and where you want to be and, and, and find a plan that works for you. A lot of people find, and, and you know, taking gluten out of your diet is super easy. You really don't need breads and crackers and cookies and all of those things. And if you really have a craving, there are so many gluten-free options that are available. Now, the more, you know, dairy-free becomes more difficult and then and when you incorporate removing all grains and then lentils and beans and then nuts and season, your options do get limited. Um, so I don't typically go to that uh, level of strictness because when I work with people privately on autoimmune conditions, I'm actually getting them tested for food sensitivities because I want to create the most customized um, meal plan because we know with food sensitivities, and I talked about that, I think it was episode number three on food sensitivities that they're very individual. So salmon, which is 
allowed in all of these diets or parsley, for example, um, can trigger an immune reaction in some people if, if your body lost the ability to tolerate it as food. So I'm incorporating um, typically dairy-free, gluten-free, and my food, sens the food sensitivity plan that is specific to the patient in their plan. And then if I suspect that there are digestive issues happening, um, I typically also don't always add, uh, most of the time I don't add legumes or beans and lentils at least the first few weeks, and then we try to incorporate this a little bit um, later. So take gluten out, then dairy. If you can do both at the same time, that would be great. Um, grains, legumes, and including beans and lentils and peas. And then the last one is the autoimmune paleo diet, which uh, you would have to take nuts and seeds and some spices out of your plan as well. Now, of course, doing all of this within a very, you know, healthy umbrella type of diet. So no sugar, not using processed oils or hydrogenated oils, um, using um, a lot of antioxidant foods from vegetables, from fruit, from uh, leafy greens and so forth. And the other important thing is depending on the specific autoimmune condition. So for example, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune condition where the body Body, the immune cells attack the pancreas, which is the organ that produces insulin, and then so those people don't have insulin um, produced and they have to depend on external insulin sources. So if you have a type 1 diabetes autoimmune condition, um, then the diet has to have a twist to make sure that we are managing blood sugar. If you have a thyroid, Hashimoto's or um, um, autoimmune thyroiditis, um, um, you would have to um, make sure that the diet or the plan or the nutrients or the supplements uh, support thyroid health production so that the cells are sensitive to any thyroid, whether you're trying to help your um, thyroid gland produce whatever it can or from an external uh, medical source. If you have um, maybe like rheumatoid arthritis, that's another autoimmune condition and people are feeling pain in their joints, then we have to make sure that we're incorporating a lot of anti-inflammatory foods like turmeric and uh, ginger and um, fish oils, of course, based on uh, food sensitivity testing for my patients. So there's always has to be an individualized approach um, that is going to be give you the best results. But if you need a general plan of action so that you can do one action today, then you actually have a couple of options depending on how um, far you're willing to, willing to go. And if you already tend to eat a lot of vegetables and fruits and, and proteins like chicken, fish, and meats, and you don't eat a lot of grains anyways, and you can eat sweet potatoes and pumpkin and butternut squash and even white potato and beets, they're really super healthy, and but they're still got a little bit of starch in them so that would replace um, rice and grains and other, um, you know, breads, then these would be actually more nutrition, many other vitamins and minerals, and it will be a naturally gluten-free diet instead of depending on gluten-free processed foods. So this was the diet part. Now, one little thing that are really, really important to mention is the reason an autoimmune condition started, now there are many reasons in the article that I shared it was a pathogen or bacteria, but it is, you know, with an autoimmune condition, you've got your genes, your genetics, and you've got your lifestyle, um, you know, your, your diet, your exercise, um, you know, alcohol, whether you smoke or you don't smoke, and then um, environment, so the air that you're breathing, the water, the um, things, the chemicals in your food that, um, that you're ingesting. So a lot of times, you know, the pathogen can be a trigger. Our genes have not changed, but the rate of autoimmune conditions has actually gone up. And so our, our genetics or our DNA hasn't changed that drastically, but probably lifestyle and the environment have made a big difference. So some, a lot of times, like I would say, I don't have a percentage because I really don't have a percentage, but the majority of the time when I work with my patients and we fix the gut issues, um, we see that the autoimmune numbers drop. So we test before and after, um, or they go back to their doctors and get it tested and it's dropped and that's great. This is, we're doing the right thing. Now, if they haven't, then there's something else triggering the immune system. And 
and you have to think, make sure, like start scratching things. Is it possible that you have mold toxicity? Um, do you have heavy metals in your system? Like maybe you eat a lot of fish, um, shark and tile fish, big types of fish, or maybe you eat tuna a lot, like daily basis. Um, maybe, and then you have mercury tox uh, toxicity, or maybe you have lead. You've lived in an older home or your hobbies, um, you know, incorporate chemicals, or maybe you work in a hair salon and you're exposed to a lot of chemicals. So you have to start thinking of, what had what triggered this autoimmune attack is there something else in my system so for all my patients I'm running stool testing to see what pathogens they have do they have yeast H. pylori virus any of these bacteria and I'm checking for gut dysbiosis and leaky gut and um, but then I'm you know it's always recommended to do other testing if these come back normal or if you're working on you know fixing your gut but still something is missing and so you have to really get your hands on it and try to fix that because if you don't, your autoimmune condition will always be there. The trigger will always be there. And you can do all your best with the diet and grocery shopping and planning the meals and saying no to every tempting food. If the trigger is there, then you're wasting a lot of effort and time and money because um, that just is going to keep poking at your immune system and activating it. So um, if this is something that is um, important to you, if you feel like... Um, you know, you need this type of help, reach out to your doctors. My experience with conventional doctors is that they're not always digging to the root cause of the um, condition. So um, if it's something that is, um, you know, definitely try to get those answers. If you want to explore how I can help you through diet, through supplements, through lifestyle, um, because of my integrative and functional nutrition approach, I am able to help some of my patients, um, depending on their conditions, with these autoimmune conditions. We have great success stories that I share on my website, and I'm happy to share that with you. So there's lots that you can do in your hands, whether it's diet, lifestyle. Oh, and I forgot to mention lifestyle. Sometimes it's stress. It can be physiological stress, like a pathogen, lack of sleep, um, very low calorie diet, or as I said, like some sort of toxicity in the body. And sometimes it's emotional stress, like you're going through a rough time with a relationship or at work, or even like having babies, that's the stress for the body. So something often triggers an autoimmune condition. So you really have to look at your life, um, at your body as physical and emotional and mental and all at one, but definitely the gut, 80% of your immune system is in the gut. So the any approach lifestyle nutrition wise has to address the gut um, making sure that it is healed and then there are no pathogens in the gut and if that's something you want to start with um, I will put the links in the videos and you can schedule a complimentary phone call and I'm happy to explore how I can help you and if this is a good fit for you. So when you watch this video, tell me where you're from or where you're watching this. I'm really excited to see if I have a lot of people from Jordan listening today, any locals. But if you're from the US, from Virginia, from any other place, let me know where you're at. Um, um, comment, write me your questions. I will go back to the comments section and respond to your comments. And if you have a question, I will actually make a video for you um, if it's something that I feel would benefit a lot of people. So thank you for watching. This is uh, Noor Zabde, functional and integrative dietitian and nutrition nutritionist. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.